Before we start off with today's video, if you guys would like to join the Discord server, link will be in the description below and will also be in that pinned comment. If it's been more than 7 days, please use the latest video, which that's one of the links will be working. And of course, I would love to have you on this channel as well, so make sure to subscribe with that bell on so you don't miss any of the videos. But anyway, let's get right into today's video. Alright guys, just a quick announcement, I have launched a new channel called The Name Short Stuff and basically it is a comedy channel with series and episodes, kind of like a TV show. And if you guys would like to join in on that, link will be in the description below and you can subscribe, like, comment, view and even share. And if you do, that would mean an absolute ton to me, so big thank you if you do. Link is in the description. But anyway, we are here to review the Suzuki Swift. Now, depending on how you look at it, it could be the fourth generation, or it could be, I don't know, six, seven, I don't know how many there has been in the past. But it depends, because if you count the original ones with this, or if you start from when it was revived back in 2005, six era. I'm personally for a revived person. So this is the fourth generation of Suzuki Swift for me. And it rivals cars such as the Polo and the Corsa and basically everything in that class. And besides, all of that there's not much else to say besides what's actually in the review so let's jump right into it straight away after the you know the moving logo okay so when it comes to the outside of the Swift the only thing you cannot miss is the big grill. It's it's decent for what it is. The lights are also in nice shape and like, you know, just the bottom bit of the bumper as well with that little bit of black and the way it's got creases like someone's punched it right at the sides. Now if you put another plate there, it does look better because it does look smaller, but it's not the worst thing on the planet. I'm not saying that by any means, it's decent for what it is. So Maruti fanboys, Suzuki fanboys, don't you dare get upset by what I'm saying. And I like to talk about the badge as well. So on some cars, it's above the grill or it's on the grill. So on some cars, it works better being on the grill, but others it works being on top. This works on top, so I'm happy that it's there. Now something like a Ford Focus or a Fiesta, it used to be at the top but then it moved to the grill on the facelift and I, frankly I'm not really a fan of that, it doesn't work so well. But anyway, when it comes to the side profile, as you can see it does look somewhat similar to the previous generation of Suzuki Swift, but obviously it is different in some areas. So the overall shape is the same but there's still different like creases and you know different bits of you know just metal and creases and just slightly slightly different designs everywhere just to make it look different side profile itself is pretty decent for what it is the previous generation was quite nice from the side profile besides that stupid handle up up there this has finally fixed it and put it back where the rear handle is supposed to be thank god i hate this anyway after my anger issues now the rear is probably my favourite profile of this car, especially the lights. They look like they've been facelifted, but they're not. I like the design the way it goes like this, and I like how the reverse lights and the indicators, they're not coloured. So it adds a bit more sporty feel to it. Sporty is probably not the right, not the right word, but I think you can understand the point. And then the boot is also nice and simple. So you've got badge, swift, and a little badge at the bottom, which I'll explain in the performance section. And you can see a little thing below the Suzuki badge, that is the reversing camera. So it is better being there than below with the number plate area, because then you get a better view all round and it doesn't get dirty or as dirty when you go along dirty roads or wet roads, which is, you know, it's a nice thought. Only thing is it probably stands out a bit more being there than being hidden and sticking out from the number plate area. And of course, like every revised version of the Suzuki Swift. I don't know if the old one actually had it, but anyway, fog light at the very bottom. Now, I'm not a fan of lights at the very bottom, but that's just me, so that's, you know, doesn't really count, I'm just saying anyway. When it comes to the inside, so Suzuki have kept it simple. 
So you've got an infotainment screen up there with vents below that and the climate control below that which is not too low so that's fine by me. And everything else is just kept simple. But something that's not simple but not complicated either is the dashboard. Well for the passenger side anyway. So as you can see you've got black up there, you've got like a white wall and it goes black and then back to white with the glove box area. And then you obviously got a bit of black and silver slash whitish in the middle as well where the climate control is it just stretches out like that now it's nice that there's multiple colors and that it's like having shelves it shows they have put some sort of design into it and they're not just being some plain boring person so that is a nice touch I don't know if all of them came with black and white but if they do that's great and if they don't doesn't matter you still got the shelf thing but if you do get one of the black and white then that's good because it does liven the cabin up a bit and you know brings more color and more interest to it when it comes to the performance so like I was saying about the rear with that little badge basically it's a hybrid well a mild hybrid so it has a 1.2 liter inline three cylinder and it was naturally aspirated now the facelifted version of the previous generation had a 1.2 liter mild hybrid but that was a four cylinder but this one is a three cylinder but either way, 82 horsepower and 83 pound-feet of torque. It is front-wheel drive or you can get it as four-wheel drive known as the all-grip. So weight for the front-wheel drive 5-speed manual is 949 kilograms. For the front-wheel drive CVT automatic it is 984 kilograms. And for the four-wheel drive manual it is 1037 kilograms. Now if you do get a CVT it will moan under acceleration because obviously it's being pushed to the red line. To some people it matters, to some people it doesn't. So really it's up to you if you want to consider that a con. For me it's a 50-50 split really which is why brackets exist on the keyboard. Now in the UK anyway it's a mild hybrid. I don't know if anywhere else like in Maruti you could get it as a non-mild hybrid with the same 1.2 litre engine. I'm not sure. And something else is, currently the four-wheel drive all grip is manual in the UK, but apparently next year they want to bring in the automatic version of the all grip. So it, you have to wait if that's what you want. Ow. So 0 to 60 for the front wheel drive manual is 12.1 seconds. However, for the CVT front wheel drive, it drops to 11.5, so it's a little bit quicker. And then the all grip is the slowest at 13.2 seconds. Top speed for the manual front wheel drive is 103 miles an hour. For the CVT, it goes up a bit to 106. And the four wheel drive all grip can't even make it to 100, which is a shame. So it sits at 99 miles an hour. So when it comes to the practicality, so the boot is 265 litres big. Uh, unfortunately it's not the biggest in this class, nowhere near actually, especially compared to cars like the Clio and the Fabia which have considerably bigger boots. But you know I've got to say something good at least and one thing I will say that is good is that it is a nice wide decent opening and it's a nice square shape and it's not busy in any way so you just plonk your stuff in. Now one thing I will note is that there is a lip to get stuff in and out. The rear seats on the other hand, that did not like, ugh, that did not sound like I said the other hand. But anyway, so the rear leg room and the rear headroom. Now, they weren't the best in class, but they weren't the worst in class. They were decent for what this class of car really. They were adequate. It was decent. Six footers would be okay. Anyone taller might struggle a little bit, but they should be okay for, you know, smaller journeys. So even though this car is small and small cars aren't particularly designed to carry the largest of people it can do it adequately for some amount of time so it's not the worst you've ever ever seen when it comes to the handling and the comfort so we'll still go with the handling this time usually I go for comfort so steering it was precise enough and it had enough weight and it was direct enough as well and the car itself well obviously it was small but it was also quite light as well which also helps going through the corners and you had plenty of grip as well even in the front wheel drive version in the four wheel drive if it senses you're losing grip rear wheels activate and you've got four wheel drive but anyway going around the corner body lean there's a little bit 
but it's not too bad it's kept to a certain extent and so you go through the corners and it's perfectly fine it handles it manages its own and it can be quite fun now in terms of comfort with what i read on reviews it's not uncomfortable but it's not the most comfortable it could be it is slightly harsh and i've read it on quite a lot of reviews actually so unfortunately it's not the best thing on the planet but then again you know not everything on this planet is perfect but unfortunately it is something to note and I also want to point out this colour I'm not a fan of this colour personally let me know what you think of this colour and is there anything else that is worth noting no there is not besides the fact if you're in India you get the Maruti version which I've said and it's the fourth generation and it's only five doors and you only get one engine then yeah so what is the verdict? So the pros are, the exterior is modest, the interior has a nice layout, the rear leg and headroom was adequate in terms of space and it did have decent handling. Now the cons are one engine choice. Now I didn't say it and I forgot to so I do apologise. But yes, I believe no matter where you are you only get a 1.2 whether it be mild hybrid or not. Which is a shame, you know, if you compare the cars like the Clio and the Fabio. Fabio only gets two engines, but one of them has multiple power outputs. Lots of them, actually. And I reviewed the Fabio as well. But anyway, it is what it is. The boot is on the smaller side for its class. The ride is slightly firm, so that's just something to note, really. I mean, it's not, like I said, it's not the worst thing. It's just, you know, it's just slightly, really. And the CVT whining. I put that in brackets, like I said, brackets exist because it matters to some and it matters not to some. I know that's not correct English and I'm sorry. But anyway, that concludes my review of the Suzuki Swift. If you want me to review a car, you can let me know in the comments below and even on the Discord server because there is a section where we discuss my YouTube channels and I've got plenty of them. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys in next week's video. And please make sure to check out the Nene Short Stuff channel. And other than that, peace.